rational equations is what we're dealing with uh, for the first part of the night. So rational equations, we're going to be solving equations, which a lot of times is a little better than the other stuff because it means you get an answer. You get X equals this. You can plug it back in and check it to make sure it works. So it's a it's a um, kind of more of a concrete idea that, that it's not finding pieces of something that exists, but finding actual answers to the thing, which a lot of people uh, like better than uh, the more theoretical graphing part of this. So uh, let's start with this one. 2x minus 3 over 2 plus 5x over x plus 1 is equal to x. Okay. So this is a rational equation. And rational equations uh, are just equations with fractions in them. Um, and the biggest part of, of the ones that you'll encounter in this course, the denominator is going to have some x's in it, uh, that sort of thing. So we've got to deal with addition and subtraction of fractions here when we're dealing with rational equations and when we deal with inequalities with rational expressions. Uh, so we've got to deal with adding and subtracting fractions. In order to add and subtract fractions, what do you have to have? Common denominator. That is the the thing here. All right. So what we've got to find is a least common denominator for the whole equation, both sides together. So it's like we're adding all three of them, but we're we're not adding all three of them. We're only working with two of them there that we're adding. So we need to find a least common denominator. The first thing I want to do is look at the denominators that are there. We have a two. We have an x plus 1. What's the denominator over here under the x? 1. So technically, there's a 1 there. So that helps us. And now let's look at the least common denominator of those three. Well, first thing you want to try to do, and I'm going to scoot this over so I've got a little bit more room. To look at the least common denominator. Is look at the denominators and say, can I factor any of them? Of the denominator. Don't worry about the numerators. Just the denominators. Can I factor any of them? No. Okay. If I cannot factor any of them, then I look and say, okay, are any of them the same at all? No. You got a two, I got an x plus one, and then I got a one. Those are all three different pieces. Okay. If they're all three different pieces, then the common denominator is all of them put together. Right? So it'd be one times two and then two times x plus one. That one that's under this x over here doesn't really do anything to the problem, right? It's, it's just going to leave it the, the same. So then if we know the common denominator is this, then we know what everybody needs and what everybody has. So the first fraction needs what? Needs an x plus one. So we're going to put an x plus one on the bottom, and I'm going to put an x plus one on top. Notice that I put the uh, what was already in the top in parentheses because it's two things. So I've got to multiply that out. Uh, with distributive property twice. What does the second fraction need? Two. So multiply top and bottom by two. The third fraction needs what? Two and the x plus one, right? It needs both of them, right? It's only got, it only has the one, so I'm going to multiply it by two x plus one. Two x plus one. Now, because I have the denominators the same now, I don't have to worry about them. Okay? There's the only thing that I have to worry about with the denominators are what are the restrictions? The restrictions on X. Well, that comes from setting the common denominator equal to zero and solving it. That tells us x cannot be negative one. If we get negative one as one of our answers, we throw it away. That's it's just like finding the domain. Take the denominator, the common denominator here, set it equal to zero and solve it, and that gets you your restrictions on x. That means that's the answer you cannot get. If you get that answer, you throw it out. Okay? 
So if we end up getting a negative one, doesn't mean we're going to get a negative one, but if we do, we're going to throw it away. The next part makes this so much easier because you've done the hard work of getting the denominator the same. Now all you have to work with are the numerators. So what we do next is make the numerator equation. The numerator equation has 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 plus 2 times 5x, and it's equal to 2x times x plus 1. So I went ahead and multiplied the x times the 2 up there on the top. Really, that's 2x. All I've got to do now is multiply this out and solve it. That sounds easy. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's a little more difficult. This one's not too bad. Okay, so if I multiply this out, 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times 1 is 2x, negative 3x, negative 3. These two together, that's 10x. On the other side of the equal sign, I got 2x squared plus 2x. Are there any like terms on the left-hand side of the equal sign? All the plain x's can go together. We put them together. We get 2x squared, ne uh, positive 2x, negative 3x, and positive 10 would be, so it'd be negative 1 and 10 would be 9x minus 3. Yeah, plus 9x minus 3. And then the other side has 2x squared plus 2x. Are there any like terms that I can move across the equal sign now? The 2x squared and 2x squared. So if I move one of those by subtraction, what happens to both of them? 2x squared minus 2x squared is cancel each other out. So I end up with this problem. 9x minus 3 is equal to 2x. Because it doesn't have an x squared in the problem, I don't have to get it equal to zero. I just got to get x by itself. If it has x squared or x cubed or anything with an exponent on that x, I need to get it equal to zero so I can solve it. But because it doesn't, I'm just going to get x by itself. So I move the 9x over. You could, but then you got it equal to zero, and you're gonna to have to do another step again to get it unequal to zero. It's gonna it's gonna end up being the same amount of steps. You could do that absolutely, but for this one, it it ends up we're having to undo that one of those steps eventually. So if I move the nine x, I get negative three is equal to negative seven x. Divide by the negative 7. Negative 3 divided by negative 7. Positive 3 sevens. Negative divided by negative. It's positive. Negative 3 divided by negative 7. Now, is this the same thing as a restriction? No, so we keep that. That's the right answer. How do we know that's the right answer? We take that back to the original problem. Plug it in for x. Everywhere there's an x and check it, and it works. That works. Okay. It's a positive 3 sevenths. Positive 3 sevenths. That's what x is equal to. Yeah. All right. Let's look at another one. Say so we have x over x minus 5 plus 5 equals 5 over x minus 5. We got three pieces there, but one of them doesn't look like a fraction. How do we make it look like a fraction? Put it over one. Okay. Now, common denominator. It, technically, it's x minus five times one, but the times one, does it do anything to it? No. So we then look at our restriction. Take that common denominator, x minus 5, and set it equal to 0. We know x can't be 5. If we get 5 as an answer, we're going to throw it out. Okay. Now we need to go back and fix our, our fractions 
so that they've got the same denominator. All right, so what does the first one need? Nothing. Second one needs, it needs the X minus 5, top and bottom. Third one, doesn't need anything either. Just that middle one we had to fix. So now that the denominators are the same, we can just take the numerators. X plus 5, parentheses X minus 5, equal to 5. Distribute 5x minus 25 is 5. Combine like terms. 6x minus 25. I would add 25. 6x is equal to 30 now. Divide by 6 for the last step. And X is 5, but we had a restriction over there that X couldn't be 5. We got that as an answer. What do we do with it? Throw it away. Okay. That's the only answer we had. What's that mean about the answers? Yeah, they're null and void. There are none of them. There are no solutions. Because we threw we the only answer we found was the one that it couldn't be. So if if the only answer you find is the one it couldn't be, then there's no solution. If there are two answers and you throw one of them away, well, you still got an answer. It's not the same. So you can you can have uh, multiple answers. We're going to see that on the next example here, where we have more than one answer out of that. So common denominator is your first job. Get your restrictions on X from that common denominator and then work with the numerators. Okay. Let's look at example C. Um, X minus 5 over X minus 3 plus 1 over X equals negative 7 over X squared minus 3X. This one's a little bit tougher, adds a little bit more, you know how we do build up as we go here. So we look at our denominators and we've got to look at what do they have, do they have anything in common? The third one looks a little different than the rest of them have, right? Say that again. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying the third one factors. As the other two pieces. But your X, what's your X underneath your one? Can't you do that with X with a minus three? Nope. This is tied with the subtraction. It's tied with it. You with cannot it. do anything with the pieces that are tied with addition or subtraction. So if you factor though, as Joe was saying, if you factor that denominator, it's X times X minus three, because they have a GCF of X. So this one in disguise has an X like that one does. It also has an X minus three like that one does. So this one is, like Joe said, it's, it's exact, it is the actual common denominator that we want. And we find that through factor. Okay, so that's what you've got to look for. So your common denominator is X parentheses X minus three. Because this one has an X and has an X minus three. That one has an X but doesn't have an X minus three. That one doesn't have the plain X. Okay. So, restrictions. You set the denominator equal to zero. It's already factored, so we're going to set X equal to zero. X minus three equals zero. So here's one of our restrictions. The other one, split the sign. So if we get a zero, we throw it out. If we get a three, we throw it out. 
Now let's go back and fix our denominators and numerators at the same time. What does that first fraction need? X. So top and bottom get an X. What's the second fraction need? X minus 3. The third fraction doesn't need anything. It's already got both of them. Okay. So numerator equation then is X parentheses X minus 5 plus 1 times X minus 3 equals negative 7. Multiply it out. Give me X squared minus 5X plus X minus 3 equal to negative 7. Same process. You look for like terms. Like terms on the left-hand side give us X squared minus 4X minus 3 equals negative 7. This one's a little different because we have an X squared in the problem. Anytime there's an X squared in the problem, we want to get the problem equal to what? Zero. Zero. So we need to move that seven. Get the color there. So that's going to be X squared minus 4X plus 4 equals zero. Now, we can solve that either by quadratic formula or factoring, if it will. This one will factor, so that's how I'm going to do it. Multiply to be 4, add to be negative 4. I just gave part of the answer away. Negative 2 and negative 2. So we end up with x minus 2 and x minus 2. Set those equal to 0. It'll be the same answer twice. So it's really, we only have that answer, x equals 2. That doesn't match one of my ex my restrictions, so I'm okay. I'm going to keep them. Those are my answers, x equals 2. Same answer twice, and that's okay if that happens. Let's look at another. Let's do x over x plus 5 plus 5 over x minus 5 equals 50 over x squared minus 25. First thing you should look for is the denominators in any of them factor. X squared minus 225. Would be. Yes. Yeah. One's plus, one's minus. Right? Doesn't matter what order you put the plus and minus in, just on it that way. Now, so what does that tell us about the denominator, the common denominator? Yeah, it's x plus 5 and then x minus 5. So that's nice because our other two fractions have part of that. So it makes it a little easier to, to fix. Uh, so our restrictions then, since we know that that's our common denominator. Yeah, x plus or minus 5. So we set those equal to 0. x is pos can't be positive 5, x can't be negative 5. I wrote that backwards. Should be negative five here, positive five there. Not that it matters. So those are the things that x cannot be. X can't be plus or minus five. Okay. So let's go back and fix our fractions. The top, one, the first one there needs what? The first one. X minus five. It needs x minus five. So x minus five on it. The second one needs x plus 5. The third one needs nothing. Okay. So our numerator equation then is what we work with. x, x minus 5, 5, 
x plus 5 equals 50. We want to work that problem out and solve it. So x squared minus 5x plus 5x plus 25 is equal to 50. Again, look into combine like terms if possible. Uh, so we have a negative 5 and a plus 5x. They cancel each other out. And a couple of different ways to work this one. One way would be to factor it. Another way would be doing by square roots. Uh, if you subtract 50, you're going to do it by factoring. If you subtract 25, you'll do it by square roots. Um, it's the same answer either way. I'm going to do subtracting 50 because we're in the factoring kind of mode here lately. So, And we've already factored x squared minus 25 tonight, haven't we? Let's plus 5 x minus 5, which is kind of conspicuous that that's exactly the same as our common denominator was, so we know that has the same answers and it's going to be no solution. We've done two of them that have no solution, um, but no solution is not a very common. Uh, we've done two exceptional ones that, that it came up on because those are usually the most confusing ones uh, when that happens or the thing that we forget to look check into. Uh, but no solution is not going to happen very often. And you're going to get answers that don't match your description most of the time. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's working. But it, it really doesn't get not going to get much deeper than that as far as solving those equations. Um, and and it really is that process every single time. Exactly. I think it is. I think it's easier than what we were doing. So let's look at the next section, uh, which is 1.7. So one of the rare times we're actually staying in the exact same part of the book. We're not jumping all over the place. So rational inequalities. All right. Rational inequalities are um, somewhat easier to do uh, than what we were doing before. They are very, 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 very similar to rational equations. Remember when you, we solved inequalities back uh, in 100, right after we had solved equations, they, all the steps were the same. The steps as far as getting ready to solve it are the same, okay? The only thing that changes with inequalities is that we want to first, when you're doing an inequality, the, the big difference is get everything to one side. Okay. Kind of like getting it equal to zero, but we're going to have an inequality symbol there. The reason you want to do that is because determining if a fraction is less than or greater than another fraction is hard to do. But determining if something is greater than zero or less than zero is really easy to do. If it's positive, it's greater than zero. If it's negative, it's less than zero, right? So that's one of the reasons you want to do that. So you make, yourself, make it easier on yourself once you start getting answers to test it out of it and say, okay, well, is that positive? Then it's greater than that. If it's negative, it's less than that. So, uh, so let's look at an example of that. So, six over x minus three is greater than or equal to four. So, simple inequality. Doesn't look very bad because you only got one fraction in there. But because it has that x in the denominator, this is not as simple as just multiplying both sides by x minus 3 and solving it. Um, you've got to work it a little bit different way. If it were an equation, yes, that's absolutely how you do it, but it's not. It is a inequality, so we've got to do this thing first. So we're going to get everything equal to 0, or get a 0 on one side. So we'll move everything to one side. I like to move stuff to the left and get, you know, get the 0 over here. 
just out of habit. It really doesn't matter which way you do that. So I'm just going to subtract 4. So that's going to be 6 over x minus 3 minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Then I'm going to work it like it was an equation. I'm going to get an LCD. Okay. What would be the common denominator for those fractions? X minus 3. So the first one has everything it needs. The second one needs X minus 3. We also, just like with an equation, need to look at our restrictions. So X cannot be 3 out of that. Now, next thing to do, we fixed our fraction. We got the common denominator of x minus 3, so we multiply this. Why did I not do it over here to the 0? Yeah, well, even if I multiply by x minus 3 times 0, what's it going to turn back into? 0. zero. So, you don't, so you don't even have to work with this side at all. It's 0, so it's just going to stay 0 forever. And like Joe said, we're going to test it against 0. Uh, anyway, so you don't have to work with the side that has zero on it. Uh, so we then set up the numerator equation, 6 minus 4, parentheses, x minus 3. And we're going to solve that like it's an equation. Okay, We'll deal with the inequality part in just a little bit. Okay. So distributed property, 6 minus 4x plus 12, good job. And then simplify, negative 4x plus 18, so 0. And then solve that. So subtract 18, negative 4x is equal to negative 18. Divide by negative 4. 9 over 2. This is where it gets different. Because remember, uh, with equations, you get numbers that, you know, there's one answer. It's x equals this. Or maybe there's two answers. But it's x equals a number. With inequalities, remember, the answers were a whole bunch of things. It would be like all the x's that were greater than 3 or something like that, or, or less than or equal to 9 over 2, or something like that. So we've got, but we, we've got an inequality here that has fractions in it or rational expressions. So we've got to do a little bit more work to that. So what we've got to do is set up intervals to test. And this is the part that usually gets people confused with inequalities on rational inequalities. So set yourself a number line up. You don't have to put a whole lot of numbers on it. You just got to put the numbers that are important. The important numbers are on the screen. The restriction and what you got when you solved it, okay? So you got to just know where they're at. Well, 9 over 2 is 4 and a half, right? So I know 4 and a half is bigger than 3. So I can put a 3 right there and a 9 over 2 right there. I don't have to have the numbers that are on the other side of that. I just got to know where they're at. Now, here's where we've got to look at this. Um, we have to know that at 3... It cannot be 3, so I'm going to put an open circle there because it can't be 3. It can be around 3, but it can't be 3. But it could be 9 over 2 because my inequality symbol had a what? Go back to the original. It had a greater than or equal to. So I could have a filled in dot right there. So it could be 9 over 2. It could be anything between... 3 and 9 over 2. Could it be anything above 9 over 2? Could it even be answers that are less than 3? That's what we have to test. Is these three, we've got three areas. What this does is it creates boundaries. We've got three areas to test. One area is from negative infinity to 3. 
We need to pick a number that fits in there. Give me a number that's between negative infinity and three. Two is, what's an easier one? What's even easier? Zero is even easier than that. If we pick x equals zero, let's check it there. The interval here is from three to nine over two. And I put a bracket on the nine over two because the nine over two had a billion dot, right? So that's, that's the interval in here. Give me a number that's between three and four and a half. Four. Okay. This interval is from nine over two to infinity. Give me a number that's bigger than four and a half and goes toward infinity. Six works. So we could do six. We could do five. We could do anything. Six works. We have three different numbers from these intervals to test. It's possible that two different intervals are true and one is false. It's possible that two are false and one is true. We've got to test this in the original problem. Okay? So let's go to the original problem and test it. So if we're going to test x equals 0, 6 over 0 minus 3, and then remember we moved that over so that it was minus 4, and we want to know is that greater than or equal to 0. Six over negative three is negative two minus four. Is negative six greater than or equal to zero? No, this is false. This area is false. So we know that's not where the answers are. Because that it yielded a false result. Then I go and test x equals four. Six over four minus three minus 4. Is it greater than or equal to 0? So that'd be 6 over 1. Is 6 minus 4 greater than or equal to 0? Yeah, that's 2. 2 is bigger than or equal to 0. So that's true there. So we know for sure that from 3 to 9 over 2 works, but it may work all the way up to positive infinity. We don't know that for sure. we got to test. It. Okay? So we're going to test x equals 6. Okay, so uh, 6 over 6 minus 3 minus 4. Is it greater than or equal to 0? So that would be uh, 6 over 3, which is 2. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 greater than or equal to 0? No, oh, that area is false. So the only answer is in this middle interval. Solution is from 3 to 9 over 2. So your solution comes from testing those intervals. So the work is just like inequality. Any inequalities work to get those boundaries is just like equations. You just got to get it equal to zero before you start because it makes testing so much easier. Okay, and then set up your boundaries and then pick points that fit in those boundaries. Let's look at another one and see if we can do it. It's not, we're not going to get too difficult with these. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give you incredibly hard ones to do. Let's say we have 3x plus 1 over 2x minus 3 is less than 4. So no equal to mark on this one, just a less than symbol. So, first move. Move the four. Because that's going to make it easy to test. And we want to get our, our LCD and our restrictions. Well, 
that's 4 over 1. So that means the common denominator is just 2x minus 3. We set 2x minus 3 equal to 0. x is positive 3 over 2. Good job. So that's one of our boundaries on, that we're going to put on the number line. We need to find the other one. So what does the second fraction need? Yeah, 2x minus 3. So this was a little bit more to multiply out, but still not incredible uh, lengthy problem there. Seems like a long problem, but pretty much everything we're doing right now is taking a whole page to do. So minus 8x plus 12. And then I'm just going to set it equal to 0 because I'm just finding a boundary. I don't really worry about the inequality until we go back and test. Okay, now, simplify. 3x minus 8x would be negative 5x. 1 plus 12 would be 13. Subtract the 13. Negative 5x is equal to negative 13. Yeah, positive 13 over 5. So that's our boundaries have two places, positive 13 over 5 and positive 3 over 2. Which one's bigger? 13 over 5. So I'm going to put 13 over 5 here and 3 over 2 there. Don't, don't stress yourself out about how far they need to be apart. Doesn't really matter as long as you get them in the right order. Let, left hand for the lesser number, right hand for the upper number. Okay? Now, here's the, the thing. We know that on the 3 over 2, it's an open circle because that was the restriction. The restriction is always going to be an open circle. The 13 over 5 should have an open circle or a filled-in circle. Why open this time? There's no equal to sign, so it can't be exactly that number. Uh, the, the inequality is inside the one on the, on the answer to your equation. Okay, If it has an equal to mark, it's filled in. It doesn't, it's, it's not, okay? Now, those are our boundaries. So we got to figure out some numbers that go in there. So I need a number that's less than 3 over 2. 0 is less than 3 over 2, that'll work. I need a number that's between 3 over 2 and 13 over 5. 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. 13 over 5 is 2.6. 2 is right in between. That's an easy one to plug in, and it's right there. So I'm going to use 2, and then I need a number bigger than 2.6. 3. Okay. So this one, the interval is negative infinity to 3 over 2. The interval for the middle piece is 3 over 2 to 13 over 5. And this one is 13 over 5 to infinity. I'm just going ahead and writing the interval notation for each piece. So when I find the right ones, I've already got that stuff done. I just pull that down and that's my answer. Okay? So I know I've got to test all of those. So it's three numbers to plug in. So I'm going to plug in the zero. So uh, top part was 3x plus 1. So 3 times 0 plus 1 over 2 times 0 minus 3, and then minus 4, is that less than 0. That was the original problem. So that'd be negative 1 third minus 4. Is that, is, is that less than 0? Negative 1 third and then subtract some more from it stays, it's more negative, right? Yeah. Negative 4 and a third. So that's definitely less than zero. So this part's true. Let's, let's plug in the two. So three times two plus one. Two times two plus one. Or minus three, excuse me. Hurry there. Minus four. Is that less than zero? So that'd be six plus one is seven. Four minus three is one. Seven minus four. Is three. Is three less than zero? No. So this area is false. The middle part is false. 
Because when I plugged in a number from that middle part, it didn't work. I'm going to plug in that 3 and see if it works. 3 times 3 plus 1. 2 times 3 minus 3 minus 4. Is it less than 0? So that would be 9 plus 1 is 10. 6 minus 3 is 3. 10, 10 divided by 3 is... Six, it'd be, well, it's it's three and a third. Three, you know, three and one third minus four is going to be what kind of number? A negative number. Okay, so this that is definitely less than zero. So it's true here as well. We got two of those intervals that are true. So our solution is the union of those sets. Since we got two of them. We've got the union of negative infinity to 3 over 2, u, and then 13 over 5, positive infinity. That's the interval notation for that. The set notation for that, that's a little tougher to get to. Uh, we need x is less than... Yeah, less than 3 over 2, or x is greater than 13 over 5. Not too bad. It's just more in between the two parts. Uh, yeah, I can do it. So it's... Again, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna get too crazy hard on these uh, rational things. It's just not doesn't make sense to get too deep on those. You're not gonna do this. To the grocery store All right, let's uh, work problems from 1.6 the first 25 or so, and 1.7. Uh, I think that's right. Right numbers for that newer version of the book. Out of that. If you got a question about those uh, while you're typing up that email to me, take a picture of it and attach it to it so that that way, no matter where I'm at, because I got Joe's email and I was nowhere near my house uh, and I could have replied back uh, and, and do things. I, I don't mind doing that uh, wherever I'm at, unless I'm at, you know, in church. I usually don't do it then, but. Uh, but uh, anywhere else, I, I don't mind replying back to. So if you shoot me a picture with it, you'll get a more immediate response. Uh, and a whole lot of chasing down that's got to be done. But 